hoes come quicker. I got scratch, bitch. Wicker, wicker. I'm sick of you, bougie hoes. I be fucking with the harassing who's your clothes. Your bitch plus a booty hoes. Fuck that, you got the plush cap. Bend over and let me touch that. What's that? A freckle face, flush that. Make him take a knee like a touch mat. And grab a hole to my nutsack. <laughs> prove like that's what people are fighting they're like okay but what's it gonna prove if they like don't play a game and i and what makes me sad is like i'm like hey people still aren't getting it like that like that you know like colin kaepernick like four years ago tried to try to do this but like you can't like they're trying to do like and 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 i've had conversations with dara and gregory on my own show about this kind of stuff is like i and, and the Milwaukee Bucks, of all colors, literally their public statement was the reason why they're doing this is because they're still trying to figure out as individuals and educate themselves. That's why they boycotted last night. They have not, They don't know what they're going to say yet. They don't know if they're going to resume playing. They're going to decide on Friday or today or tomorrow or whatever if they're going to resume to play. But they're going to they're gonna stop. They're going to educate themselves. And this is from black to white to every kind of player. They're like, we're not playing tonight because it needs to fucking stop. And it, they didn't say fuck it, but they, you know that's what I do in my in, in my um, PR statement to the public. <laughs> but they were like, we're gonna. They made the statement. They're like, we boycotted tonight because we want to educate ourselves. Yeah, I'm surprised. I didn't know the NHL actually. No, that was tonight. Um, all all NHL. That games. was tonight. All they okay. they announced it earlier tonight. No no NHL games. And that's crazy because you know, like that, that's saying something because you know, ain't not no trying to be like NHL. that. Not trying to be like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but like, like we're we not in the NHL. We're not playing like you know what I mean. I roll the, the all any road plays or ice skates in like twenty years. I break my ankles. Okay, we don't mess with hockey, but that says something when we the used NHL... to. We used True. to. There used to well, be. We did. We did. There we used did. to be major black uh, hockey teams. Especially in Maine. Wow, mm. this is this is fun. Facts I right also here. think that what's important is it's not, but it's a the the fact that they're going on strike. I think right now with everything that's uh, happening, uh, I think it's interesting to see the uh, the complete index of Americans or like this complete spectrum of Americans either boycott something or go some something as visible as the NBA go on strike. And I think that's what's been an interesting thing about being in quarantine, a lot that's going on politically. People are putting their foot down. So I think it's really dope that the players are going on strike because they're effectively not showing up. Like, when I boycotted Goya and continue to, like, Amen. that's not buying that product. I think, I think people need to realize that, like, people tried to uh, boycott the NFL. People try, have tried in the past, like, to stop watching. To have the players stop playing and do a full-on strike is just, like, so I'm not going to kid myself into thinking I can have, be hopeful, but I was floored yesterday. It was exactly the boost I needed. When that came through in, like, Twitter, I was like, this is fucking amazing. So that's been just a lovely gust of wind for me. So I'm happy that we're all, like, living through this moment, and it's really dope, Amory, like you said, like, NHL, and, and listen, and, uh, I'm, NFL, yeah. hopefully, you know? Well, and listen, I'm 100, I'm white girl. I will never know, you know what I mean? I will never know what it's like, but I will say this is like, um, 
I think sport, like I like the athletes. This is what I like. I, I, I'm not saying I believe that games should be stopped, but I think athletes have such a platform and such a power that they can do. I mean, a, a lot, like they run the world. Like these, these million multimillionaire athletes have a huge platform. I don't know what the answer is. Like, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Like, I don't know if stopping the game is or like, I don't know what the answer is, but I think it's cool that they're at least acknowledging and trying to do something to make self self aware. Do you know what I mean? Like they have a lot of power over a lot of people. So, and they have, so I think that's what's dope. I don't know what the answer is. I don't know if it's not playing a game. I don't know if it's going into their communities like LeBron and like other players have, they have like gone back to where they came from. Like, you know what I mean? And like trying to educate and like whatever, I don't know what the answer is, but I think it's cool that we're at least they're starting to spread awareness and like making moves. Yeah. The answer is there's a long way to go and you know, it's a big deal that everybody protested and you know, whether or not this makes a change overnight, this is gonna be remembered in the history books and you know, that's what's important is taking every step at a time to make these changes that need to fucking happen ASAP. So this is great, you know, um, and me as well, you know, even though, you know, I, I'm Jewish, I'm still, I'm, I'm not a person of color, you know, I'm never going to understand the same struggles on that level. Same. But, you know, yeah, but still, you know, I understand persecution and I understand, you know, what it's done to my family and why they came to America. So, you know, uh, the fact that people have to worry about you know getting killed it's just it's just it's beyond wrong it's disgusting this is supposed to be the land of the free you know not the land of the free if you have pale skin <laughs> you know? but the other thing is too with this with the nba you know it come, coming together and boycotting another thing is is that they're also stopping the dollar by doing that and that's gonna make people that's pay absolutely attention. right you everything that. comes down. Everything comes down to money. Everything comes yep. down. To money. I don't care that, what anyone says. Everything comes down to money. And that's what I'm saying. If other organizations, if the NFL and the MLB and like the NHL follow suit, they all came together like that. I mean, every single one of them. Imagine the dollars is going to stop and how much people are now going to pay attention because ain't nobody going to be making money. Like nobody's making money until, you know, what I'm saying something happens. Yeah. I mean, all leagues are really taking steps, though. I'm talking not just NBA and NFL, which is, you know, what we primarily focus on. NHL, MLB, WNBA, soccer, like everything is starting to, like, kneel. And and I don't know if you guys know this, but the uh, NFL is taking out the national anthem now from the from the game. They took it out of the game. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's wow. crazy. I never thought we'd see the day. Holy shit. They so they they are no longer saying the national anthem at the games anymore. Can we start? Wow. Can we replace it with Nuff if you buck? Can we re- Yes, <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what I think that it should be. <laughs> or take the Negro national anthem and put a trap uh beat behind it. And that <laughs> That yo, you cannot you get to that. You Tony the Rock. Do not get you buck. Why can't we do not if you buck? That would be great. Because what? they'd all get CTE. If you put knock if they buck before <laughs> each game, buck. those poor young men, <laughs> they're going to get the worst CTE. That's not fair to them. I'm well, looking out for them. But the Black National it, Anthem, absolutely. I was say, what is, what is it going to be? Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with? That would actually be pretty cool back. <laughs> all I know is there's no National Anthem anymore. I thought I thought that they were, because I saw that Na- like when NASCAR was paying attention, I was like, oh, holy <laughs> fuck. what is happening? NASCAR? That's the, that's the holy grail of rednecks. <laughs> exactly. That's why I was like, yo, y'all are caring. This is, this is bizarre. And then I saw them play like the opening of the Black National Anthem. And I was like, OK, nobody asked for this. But this is also very nice. I never thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that they were gonna do that for the for like the football games too, but I think taking it out is probably just the yeah. best all. Which which you know all the you can imagine which uh, group of people is upset that we're taking out the national anthem. But you know um, I I think 
I, it, there's just move, there's progress being made. So I think that's um, whatever anyone believes. And I think it's, I think change is always hard, but it's good for everybody. Can't yeah, for it. sure. I mean, I think if it wasn't for, and I have it someplace because I have to throw it in a joke somewhere, somewhere, but if it wasn't for that fourth or that third or fourth stanza of the national, have y'all heard it? Yes, yes. It was like, this the third, it's a, it's yeah, a missing it's verse that they crazy. took out because when you add that verse in, I don't know the lyrics, but when you add that verse in, it literally makes since the entire national national anthem is about slavery. Yeah, the whole thing is I just found it. The um, whole thing. And where is that band who vauntingly swore that the havoc of war and the battle's confusion, a home and a country should leave us no more. Their blood has washed out their foul footsteps pollution. No refuge could save the hireling and the slave from the terror of the flight or the gloom of the grave. And the star spangled banner in triumph doth wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave. This is that bullshit they've been having me sing forever? Okay. But I didn't even think about it growing, <laughs> but I didn't even like think about it growing up. This is just something you were programmed, right? And Thank so, like, I, I had this, yeah. I had this even weird conversation today about like the Bible. I think everything's so outdated that we just need to update everything. I was like, okay, we need to maybe stop being angry at everything that was made because that was ignorance in history. Maybe we just need to like have a little meeting. I don't know who has the meeting, but like, we'll update, little reboot on everything, get everyone caught up up to speed you know like because yeah. what the because we're all programmed i have no idea i was programmed on the bible my whole life i was reading that i was like this is so negative i'm such a positive person <laughs> like, you know what i mean so like i just i think we i think we need a little update in life like uh yeah. you know and yeah. like tell our tell our grandparents to calm down and uh you know like keep them up to speed exactly exactly i don't even know if they know like i didn't know about that third stanza until years uh, I played sports my whole life. I, the national anthem was like the hype for me. I'm like about to play this game. I didn't know I it was racist this whole time. Yeah, I no. Like, I was like, whoa. I was like, I've been racist my whole life. Like, what the hell? Yeah, I did. No, I, I, I remember getting in trouble for the what is that? The Pledge of Allegiance. I I I would get in trouble a lot for not standing up for that. Um, a lot. And then I learned, you don't have to cross your heart. You just have to stand. So then they didn't like the fact that I knew that. I got a lot of detention, but I didn't get graduate to the Star Spangled Banner until later. <laughs> no idea though. But no, I listen, I, I'm the same way. I play sports and anytime, anytime we had a basketball game and we had that home game, they played that national uh, you're anthem. Like, you're the, like, oh! oh my, you got that adrenaline in you? you Yes, I mean, I didn't have the adrenaline because I sat at the bench, but <laughs> still, I understood it. I want, listen, here's the thing. I, I, hey, a. Marie, I remind you because you were like, you were like an all American ball player. When I tell people I play basketball, I'm like, chill out, okay? I was part of it. Like, <laughs> like, my dad was my coach, and one time there was a game and they were going to put me in, and I gave them a look. I gave my dad a look like, you sure you want to do that? Like, I'm, you can put me in. I'm just saying, if you expect me to score, not going to happen. Like, right. um, don't expect much out of me. I'll pass right. the ball, but I'm just saying, maybe you might want to consider someone else. <laughs> right, right. That's, hol that's hilarious. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, but no. Speaking of a civil unrest in this country, keep it moving. We all know that the presidential election is coming up. And we know that our good old Uncle Joe, Uncle Joe Biden, well, Camilla Harris, Auntie Harris, Auntie Harris, look like the aunt that make the good potato salad. Okay, are uh, running for the Democratic Party. Now, I pretty much we all feel the same way. I guess we, you know we're all voting for Biden and Camilla Harris because I kind of feel like their slogan should be Biden Harris twenty twenty. Y'all niggas ain't got a choice. But what do you guys think, Zilla? We start with you. Uh, um, not Trump. That like I only got I only got two options and not Trump. She just made been, she just made I've the perfect so point, battered, girl. Um, I've been so battered politically. Uh, 
like emotionally uh this since the pandemic started um yeah you look hurt so i was look- i wasn't i wouldn't say I, w- I would go as far as to say i was a bernie bro but i really liked the conversations that were happening when it was between uh bernie and biden and then suddenly that whole option went away and then a pandemic happened and it was like this is exactly what people have been asking for universal health care all of these things that people thought were shit we needed them more than ever and it's just been incredibly frustrating so all i can continue saying because i feel like with people who are going to tell me that i'm a fool for uh voting at all because there's some people who think they so progressive they mocking voting right now (laughs) they thinking about some backwards shit so all i'm gonna say is not trump and i'm gonna do everything in my power but you know my ass is not doing no mail in ballot. I'm going to go shove that shit in person in their faces. So that's all I'm I'm worried about that. Yeah. That's all I'll say. Not Trump, and I'm worried about the election. Someone just posted something that maybe uh, it was Mo Vita, actually. Uh, and she was like, I'm concerned for uh, people of color on election lines. And I was like, fuck, I didn't even think about that. But, you know, <laughs> we can get shot on any day, so I might as well get shot in a fucking electric line, right? Oh my God. Well, well, here's the thing. I'm good on that. I don't part. want to have that be the hurt. reason that I'm not in the line. You know <laughs> what I mean? But that's a big, that's a bit. I didn't think about that. And then you get these dudes like Kyle going out and shooting oh. protesters. Oh, you know, I, I don't know if in Brooklyn, where I am around all the black people, I'm going to have like a big issue. But that is something that, like, wow, yeah. I didn't think about that, you know? So we, yeah. we are going to need to be strategic and we're going to need to. I don't know how that works. If we can collect like old people ballots and bring them. I, I feel know. like in New York, you have a better chance though, because I feel like for the most part, people on the same page and, and why, and why. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I think I buy it in Brooklyn, but when, I didn't even think about that until she posted that. So I'm like, there are other people voting not in Brooklyn. See, that's the why only I- thing I'm worried about is. Uh, well, I think what's worrisome is a lot of the locations where people go vote is places like schools, places that have been closed because of the pandemic. So now you got this whole host of issues where these teachers are so busy, these schools are so busy shuffling, trying to teach kids. You think they're going to be ready, locked and loaded in time for election day? Do I think maybe this year they need to consider they might need two days for elections? Do you know what I mean? He's not going to consider any uh, uh, sort of Anything that's going to allow more people, considering that we're in the middle of a pandemic, they're not taking any move to make it easier, to facilitate voting. That's what has me worried. And also, they, even if you, if by popular vote, even if it's by a landslide, you know he's going to contest it. That's the thing that sucks. Mm. This is my advice to everybody, though, and I just, I just, everywhere I go, try to spread this. I think, obviously, extra exercise your, your right to vote. This, that's why this country's, a, and we're a hot mess, but we're a beautiful, weird, fucked up country. Um, but I, I uh, going back to your point, I love how you're like, just not Trump. And, and girl, I, I hear you. But, like, this is my advice to a lot of people is... All I keep hearing are what people are against, and I want to hear more what people are for. So, like, what I'm like, and I'm talking about me too, girl. I'm on your side too. I'm like, God, anyone but Trump or anyone but whatever, right? Like, I want to hear more, and like, what I keep trying to work on every day is like, all right, let's preach like why we want, like, not why we don't want Trump, why we want some Biden or whoever. Well, that's it. We got Biden, right? That's it, right? Okay, so like, focus on the pro, not the anti. That's just like my advice to people because I feel like, I don't know. I don't know if you guys agree, but I feel like I just always try to focus on the positive. You know how I am, Gregory. <laughs> yes, you I, mean, are I, I like that. I like, oh, I didn't mean to cut you off, Gregory. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, no, I, I like that perspective. I think it's an easier application, uh, easier said than done kind of thing. Um, well, it's hard for me because I just kept saying like, why the f- I'm with I I am with my girl over here. I'm like fuck yeah. Trump or whatever, right? But no, but I'm like but, I'm but I'm like telling you what I'm personally working on. I'm like okay, let me try to figure out what I like about Biden or whatever, or what you know. I mean, like I'm trying to focus on the positive and trying to put out more in the universe and the world, like what I'm for instead of what I'm against. I'm I'm absolutely with you because I'm I'm in the process of doing that just in the <laughs> way. Of, but it's but it's hard. it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. I know. I know, but I'm, I'm saying I want to focus holistically on things that I'm grateful for, right? 
So right. like that falls in that bucket of like staying in the positive. Because people I, I, keep I, people keep fighting, and I'm like, all right, they can't fight me if I'm for something. Right. Like because I'm, here's cause the I'm thing. good. I, and here's the thing. I don't want it to be clouded in. Um, the I'm I'm painting this picture of why these people are 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 so great. That's fine. I'm not saying anything. I, like they they're the choice. Okay. Here's the thing of what I like about what you're saying is that I think that we all individually need to think about what it is that we want and what we want for our country and hold these people accountable to those things yeah. so that we are focusing on the good and what we want to happen and not just, oh, well, we don't want to die. We don't want to be in Corona or we don't want, you know, and so, you know, like I'm, I'm with you. And I, so I'm trying to do it like twofold, just stay very uh, grounded in what I'm grateful for. Cause there's a lot of crazy things happening. So it's like, well, I'm grateful that I don't have to wear pants for this. You know what I mean? Like small things, small things, you know? Um, but, <laughs> but I don't want this. I don't want anyone to feel like just because we voted these people into the office that we solved anything we did not And we have to stay just as diligent. So I, 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 I don't want to paint Biden as like the savior. No, you the homie that's going to get me what the fuck I want, Biden. You are going to work for me, okay? <laughs> so let me make my list of the things that I want because I will be calling the White House. Yeah, we have to, we have to make, we have to start making them accountable because I don't want bullshit. Like, do all this everything with Black Lives Matter and everything like that and everything's going on. I'm tired of being like pacified, like right. with the whole, when they took like Aunt your mama off the box, I'm like, I don't give a damn about Aunt your mama on the box. I don't even eat pancakes, okay? So you lost. Pan- so a black woman pan- lost a pan- job in pandemic. Damn, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> don't give a damn about Aunt your mama. I don't even like fucking pancakes. I'm a waffle nigga, okay? Like I want to change, okay? That's all I want. We gotta start holding accountable. I mean, I know who I'm voting for. I'm definitely voting for Biden and, and Harris, but I still want to know. I don't know. Um. My engineer in the building, uh, Leroy Green, he can help me out. What was the state that had the two percent for Kanye West, and it was two percent black vote? And I want to know who the two percent black people are, so I can smack the living hell out of them. Okay, who? <laughs> this is no time for games. Not to pan into that crazy nigga. <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot of people. Are. I could, I couldn't believe Nick Cannon supported him. Well, no, Nick's having a rough time lately. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Nick, I mean, it should not have been a surprise after he like royally fucked up. Uh, why not just keep on fucking up, Nick? You know, I, I guess. Like Nick Cannon said that. I was like, "Hey, brother, you're right, but shut the fuck up, man. You don't say that around the whites, man. You, shut, you, <laughs> you still getting a check from them? Shut. <laughs> yeah, he already picked what side he was on a long time ago. You know. Hmm. <laughs> I just thought he was smarter. Uh, you know what? Sometimes money makes you stupid. Money makes you stupid. Uh, how he ended up on the side in the first place. He wasn't that smart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. I don't, but the crazy yeah. is that Nick Cannon actually has an incredible like come up. You know, like he, he, does. he was on the board of Nickelodeon. It seems like some, something happened. Did he have a traumatic brain injury? Then he just started wearing a turban and supporting Kanye. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you get what I mean? Like, because no, yeah. he wasn't, he was actually very savvy for a while. Oh, and then just, he, and that's the is. craziest thing, how people think that like hateful opinions matter. That they can harbor these shitty opinions. And I don't get it. It, do, it does not make any sense because, and that's, that's what I mean. You know, it's like, he has. I've watched him since the what was that Snick at Night or uh, what was uh, that? Hold well, no, not oh, well. um, S- all uh, that. It's all that. That's what the show all was. That, all that. that. All that. All that. All that. Yeah. The, oh, like from that, and then I, you know, I worked magic once. His booth was next to me. He had like some DJ beat. Uh, I don't know headphones or something. Like he just always had his hands in so many different things. Uh, that I guess, you know, just because someone can make some business moves doesn't mean that they are uh, holistically a good person. I don't know. Right. Well, here's the well, here's the thing. So this is the last question tonight. So segue into this. So we all know about this whole cancel culture situation. That's most of us being in here comedian, we know firsthand about cancel culture. But here's my question. Do you think cancel, because I do, I truly believe this because 
I think this was like the situation with Ellen. Do you think people are using cancel culture to get like clout, to get some clout to, to get a lick? You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, if this person gets canceled, now that that's more room for me. I or I can get their spot. I think it's like any movement, you know, any movement you see in history that's for a positive change, whether it's like the free love movement or you know whatever. It's like there's people who use a political movement to like justify doing stupid shit so you know people are using the you know the me too movement and you know cancel culture and a, a lot of stuff like that to you know get what they want do stupid shit and it sucks because cancel culture can be used for a lot of good things you know but um you, know, you have you have people kind of, yeah, definitely using it for clout chasing, whatever, you know, for sure. Just like uh, any movement, you know, but a lot of people who said, you know, oh, if you don't, you know, do drugs and fuck me, you're not part of the free love movement, you know, you suck. Uh, it's like, it, it's history repeating itself, to be honest, as far as that goes. Hey, Marie, what do you think about that? I, um, uh, I'm, but I'm kind of like over cancel culture, <laughs> but I, but uh, what your question, your question was, do you think people do it for clout? That's your question. Yeah. Like they, they do, like get ahead because this is, here's the thing. And I'm starting, I started thinking about this not too long ago and also thinking about the situation with Ellen. I think the more the entertainment industry in the world changes, I think, entertainers, whether it be comedians, actors, musicians, whatever, it, you have to look at it like being an athlete. Like, you have a certain time, a time span, make your money, then get the hell out. <laughs> right. Don't overstate your I just... Don't overstate I think with Ellen, what I'm having a hard time with is, like, she's she's always been, like, a huge inspiration of mine and, like, what she preaches and puts on her show, and now she's, like, a hypocrite. So that's, the, that's not what you're asking me, though. Um, I, but we still don't know if it's true. No, I'm just having a hard time with it, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, I love it, <laughs> and I'm like, no, and I'm just, well. I'm just like, I'm just like 2020. But um, I, I do think, um, do people do it for clout? Uh, I, I don't know if people do it for clout, but I do feel like, uh, I, I don't know. We are really digging deep and researching in people's past where I feel like you can grow and evolve as a person. I hope people are always evolving and growing. I'm not the same person I was 10 years ago. I'm for the love of God. I'm nervous now. I'm like, I was even thinking about that when all these people are canceled. If I get a break in comedy, I'm like, God, what the hell did I say 10 years ago? I mean, probably nothing bad. It's probably all about stupid football, but you know what I mean? Like, but I don't know. It's just, um, yeah, maybe people are doing it for clout. I don't know. I just think they use a lot of energy and whatever to cancel. I don't, I don't know. I don't have an answer. I, I, I wish I had a better answer. I don't know. I never thought about anyone doing it for cloud. I, a cloud. I think that's a very interesting question. Yeah. Cause I never thought cloud, but I yeah, think, because we're, my thing we're, is, can you remember anyone who did the canceling? Yeah, I think it can happen, but it's definitely not like the main reason people use cancel culture. Yeah, like I don't know one person that I can name from the Ellen experience, but I know that I've heard stories from people who work there and people right. who, like who know people who work in production and TV, media and film and have heard of that, you know what I mean? So it's just like, well, how long has she been doing this? And she's just been able to get away with it for so long. It, it, and it's not something that she did 10 years ago. These are things that she was doing to her employees currently. So okay. that- Okay, so can I, can I just say, I wasn't a fan of the Ellen uh, talk show because my nine to five, like I, I wasn't home. Like, you know what I mean? Like I didn't catch up. I didn't watch the show when it aired. So I'm coming more as a fan of her comedy because if you go back into like the eighties and nineties, Ellen very much is a pioneer for like women in comedy. Love. She was that my biggest inspiration. Said, that being said, Maya Angelou has a fantastic saying 
which is when someone tells you who they are, you listen. Uh-oh. Ellen Believe. was interviewed. Ellen was interviewed by the New York Times about a year and a half ago from one of her multiple properties. She had just bought Steve McQueen's Rolex, and she told the Times that she didn't like it when people asked her, when fans asked her to dance. Like, they needed to understand that she was a different person in real life and that she wasn't necessarily as nice. So what I'm telling you is, I'm not surprised. Just like Dara said, like, I've heard stories about Ellen being difficult for a bit. So I don't want her to be canceled. Because if you think about it, if she gets canceled, first of all, I've never heard of anybody doing cancel culture for clout. And I frankly think, I wish cancel culture was more powerful because there's a couple of people, Louis still on tour, People still trying to argue with me about him being a valuable comic. But back to Ellen. I want Ellen to work out the rest of her uh, contract. I do not want her to get paid by that company to not do her work. And I want her to try to mend. Maybe give someone else a, a, a hosting spot. Rotate it. Something fresh. Something cool. I don't want her to go with fix. You know what I mean? A lot is going on in the country. Like Amory said, like she positive, right? She's a exposure. Then start giving black and brown. Fix it. Meaning, like, don't just cancel Ellen. Like, what are we doing to make it better? We all, we all, we all have a past too. Like, what if it takes this to like, I don't know, evolve or make a change? Like, give someone a chance to like then make a change. Like, I, I have, I by the way, I have a lot of. Uh, I didn't know I had so many racist people in my family, and now they're starting to change their mind now. They, they Before all this happened, before George Floyd and stuff, they were, I had raised the most racist family ever, and I never knew that. But now they're like, oh, I get it now. Do you know what I mean? But it took years. So just like, maybe just like toxic work environments or anything, maybe it's taking all this crap. I don't know. I But I give people a chance, maybe. I don't know. Uh, if- that's a that's a very good point uh just like if you think about uh like i used to always be nervous about working as a woman like in the 80s do you remember all those commercials that's sexual harassment and i don't have to take it and then i would like watch mad Men, and i'm like that's how these motherfuckers are fucking treating ladies and that's what this was looking like and we were fighting to like get in there and we put up with this bullshit and it was just okay what and now that doesn't that's not the modus operation like you can't you can't go into businesses slapping asses anymore you know so it does take (laughs) time you know um and we might not see it in our lifetime but i do think that that change only happens when people keep going and if if ellen chooses to cancel herself because that's you know either it Mm -hmm. could be the network but she could take another opportunity and make it right. Just let's make it right. Yeah, she can She can do that. And if she well, chooses that- not to, then she's saying, I would rather be this way than to address what has happened and do better. And so I'm just going to take my millions and I'm going to go to my properties and I'm going to chill the fuck out with Portia. And I think- She's not again, nice I'm to Portia. Glad- I know, and I hear- I, I hear sorry, Portia, I'm sorry, sorry. you really, really nice. <laughs> Well, I'm glad that you brought up the money because I think what people are more terrified of, like people are like, oh my God, Ellen's mean. There's no way you can amass that amount of money. Ellen is well known for just owning a bunch of paintings, a bunch of properties. Like she really is someone that like has been just stacking massive amounts of money, hanging out with, remember last year, the scandal was her and George Bush, right? Uh, Hanging out at a baseball game. So like, I think what's terrifying to people is they're, they're trying to get watch a talk show hosted by someone who is like on track to possibly be a billionaire. And those are not good people. So that's why I think it's jarring to people. It's not Ellen's fault that it's just a natural progression. She's not going to be as silly. You know, she's like worth way too much money. I feel like the power kind of thing. And that's why I love what Dara, you were saying, where it's like, you can just bow out now. Right. And just be like, I'm going to be wealthy. Or like Amory is saying, do that outreach with the fans and mend, which would be dope. And frankly, would be Ellen as an ally would fix a lot. Take a stance this whole time. They've just been keeping her quiet. That's not gonna help. Yeah, you but, know what? You know what? Ellen could do. She could like set up 
little product, like we had a production studio in our uh, high school. And I thought that that was really dope for people to be able to learn those skills. She could set up some kind of institution, some kind of program across the, across the country where, you know, students of color, of white women, young black girls, whatever, all get to learn these valuable tools in production so that they're already set up for success so that they can get these jobs. I mean, there's so many things that she can do on and off camera. And it's really, cause there are those people who are doing those things off camera, like Prince. Prince did so many things that we'll never know about. We will never know about and he, so and, and he was making money too, but he still remained a nice person, you know? So like, let's just see what Ellen chooses to do by, acknowledging her mistakes and seeing what she can do to make mm. it. and call back full circle this is what athletes are doing too like it might be suffering their paycheck or like whatever but they're they're like okay what can we do to like make like let's make a difference let's 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 figure it out yeah let's yeah. figure it out yeah and I think that that it, it's weird when I say this out loud but I think that um one thing I had to wrap my head around when Trump won was that yeah no this is not good we don't like this but <laughs> it allowed us to highlight that yes we do have problems and there were a lot of issues that we had as a country that we were just ignoring we were sweeping under the rug we were not touching them at all and we can't solve problems that we don't all look at and say hey there's a problem if there's a dumpster fire outside and i'm like hey guys there's a fire outside and everyone's telling me not there's not we will never get that fire out. You know what I mean? Me and my little bucket can't do it alone. But if I have everyone around me saying, oh my God, there's a dumpster fire. Let's put it out. Right. We have a better chance of doing it. So, right. so many of these issues that we've had as a country that we've just ignored for centuries are finally being dismantled. And it, we had to almost go through something this ugly to lift up the rug and be like oh my god we've just been sweeping shit under here for all this time we just covered and it. it's gonna get harder exactly because yes, there's more shit under there there's shit that people don't like to talk about oh it, and it, it run oh it's gonna that dirt that dirt run deep it run deep, deep. deep that is some of the Real stuff deep. people talk about the most though is the thing so yeah, oh it, yeah it runs deep trust me it runs deep but, I mean, but the fact gonna, that most we're, people don't even know that that George Washington had whole ass slave teeth. I drink Jameson all the fucking time. I love this fucking liquor. But you know, it's an empty bottle. You can really tell. But you know what John Jameson used to do? He used to throw little black babies into alligator waters and draw pictures of them. Okay, this shit's problematic. I still drink it. It's bad. But you know, you just never know. Well, on that note, we're going to end do. the show. I never thank, you. thank you for joining us for Gregory's party. Uh, I do want to apologize to the guests. We did have a little bit of technical difficulties in the beginning. So, but when we have you back, it would definitely be more smooth. It's a little bit of uh, miscommunication, but that's all good. But before we leave, uh, each of you will please, you know, leave your handles, let the people know where they can follow you and subscribe and everything like that. Let's start with you, Dar. Did we record this? Yes. Awesome. Uh, where can they follow me? Dara Jamat, D-A-R-A, and then J-E-M-M-O-T-T -T on Facebook because I have an old woman living inside of me. Uh, and I'm not on Twitter because I don't want to be canceled in 10 years for something I said yesterday. Um, yeah, can be careful. Find, you can find me talking a lot of shit on IG at Chocolate Gem with a J. And um, yeah, look there for all the things you want to cancel me for. Okay, Zilla, you up? Uh, I would prefer, well, first of all, Greg, thanks for having me. This has been fantastic, ladies. It's been awesome uh, chatting with y'all. Uh, I love your background, um, by the way. I know. Oh, why, thank you. Firing. Oh, bro, I'm <laughs> so jealous. I'm so jealous. I need it. Um, if you could, uh, please follow me on YouTube. Uh, I, I have a channel called ZTV. Uh, Zilla Vision, and then also on Instagram at Zilla Vodness because I love to make videos. So, you know, that's that. Hey, Marie, you up? Oh, hi. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Sorry, I was dealing with my re rebooting the Wi Fi uh, before I showed up late. But uh, you can follow me part time, bro, on everything. And uh, by the way, I'm getting on stage for the first time live on a stage in Holcomb, Wisconsin, in two weeks. I know. Uh, I know that's where 
all these viewers are going to come from, but I'm just very excited about it. September 11th, if you're in Holcomb, Wisconsin, come out. It's going to be a great time. All right, Yumi, you up. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at yumi.kayy, Y-U-M-I dot K-A-Y. You can also follow my pet chicken at pingu, P-I-N-G-U, P-R-E-A-C-H. Do you get eggs from your chicken? Yeah, you want to see them? Yes! I'll show them. <laughs> I show you the chicken. <laughs> Thank I you, want Dar, a, I want a chicken because I want the fresh eggs, but I don't want to deal with that chicken poop. No, I have a great uh, house. It's made for rabbits, actually, but it has like a tray you pull underneath. Easier than wait, you have rabbits? It's a rabbit hutch. You know, I only have one chicken, so I don't need you know. And I take her to the beach. I take her on walks and stuff. Here's her eggs, you know. She just started laying them. You want to meet her? You want to meet yes. her? Yes! All right, let me bring her out. I'm sorry, Gregory. This was just too amazing to pass by. You can't have someone say that they have a pet chicken. I agree. I co sign this. You are absolutely oh, right. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> does she live in New York? Chicken. I don't know. <laughs> does she live Does she live in New York? I live in Brighton Beach. Yes, yeah, you mean That's dope. You yeah, we good. Yo, you got a chicken and you live in there Brooklyn? <laughs> It is a black chicken. <laughs> a baby. Yo. This is my baby boo. How long have you had the chicken? I've had her since she was a baby and she's Wait a second. Fun. Wait a second. Wait a second. You waited the whole show to bring out a freaking chicken. <laughs> well, I wanted to be considerate because I know Greg doesn't like birds. Wait, I just I love that you just, I love your, you. look look how she's holding it. I've never seen this before in my lifetime. This is uh, amazing. Wait, what's you the just have a pet chicken in Brooklyn? Like this is an unreal. Yeah, I mean people look at me weird sometimes, but it's a domesticated animal. You know, it's not like I'm taking a parrot that needs to fly No, I it's or something. I'm not no, I'm not saying that. I just I've never met someone who just has chickens and like in the city, which is dope. No, I've, I I've met someone who has a pig, a chicken. but never a chicken. Yes. What's her name? Kingu. What is it? Kingu. Kingbu. Pingu. I named her after uh, this Icelandic cartoon about penguin. Cause she looks your like your chicken is so chill. Yeah, uh, does it make a noise? She cuckoos a lot. Wait, your chicken just just <laughs> goes all over your apartment. This is insane. Does it sleep with you? Nah, you poop too much, don't you? Yeah, I can't let you in my bed. <laughs> uh -huh. Does the does the poop stink? It, I mean, you know, I, I stay on top of cleaning it, but yes, poop always stinks. You hear that, Pingu? <laughs> it doesn't stink just because you're cute. Chick. And your landlord's like, cool, have chickens. I mean, they don't want to deal with another move out, so they haven't said shit. All right, I'm just curious. I just New York's so crazy. Okay, cool. This is awesome. I don't even know if they notice. Maybe they do, because maybe they saw her on the camera or something. But I, I I've had worse things in my apartment, so. Oh, yeah, no, I know, I know. Show off those wings. Well, I don't have, I don't have a chicken, but I got a spinning chain. Is that cool? Is that cool? I don't know. That's on brand. Know. That's on Never brand. Mind. That's very cool. It's okay. Dope. Okay, but that was a good finale. But yes, watermelon. Thank you for joining us. Um, you can follow me at Comedian Gregory Hall on Instagram. You can also follow this channel, uh, YouTube Camp Nas. Uh, you can also follow us on IG at Camp Nas Media. We got a lot of content, a lot of heat coming. So please follow, like, and subscribe and comment and below. Thank you so much for joining us. Also, thank you, Yumi's Chicken Pingu, for joining us. That black ass chicken that scared the living shit out of me last time I was over at your place. <laughs> I was like, nope, no, thank you. Not doing it. Dinosaur, Greg. She's yeah, harmless. that's why dinosaurs are stink. But thank you, everybody, for joining, and we out of here. Peace. Peace. Bye.